So Creflo Dollar apologizes to the church. He says, throw away my tapes, throw away my books, throw away anything that you heard me speak about tithe before this time because I've spoken about it incorrectly. I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. So he apologized to his congregation and he apologized to anybody that he spoke on this word wrong about because now he feels that he has gotten a new revelation from God and the old way of doing tithe was misleading. There's a couple of things that I found very interesting about his comments and remarks. First of all, I want to just say shout out to you, Creflo Dollar, for apologizing. That's first. Because it's so many pastors, preachers, leaders, bishops, first ladies that know they've done wrong, know they've said things wrong, know that they've misled people, know that they're continuing to mislead people and they could never do what you're doing right now, which is getting up and apologizing for misleading. Now you have different information and you want to share that with the people. And first of all, that's not an easy thing to do. And so I just want to say that I, I, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about having someone do this. This is a breath of fresh air to me because I really lose hope a lot of times in the church because you will hear pastors, leaders, bishops, whatever, always saying, don't forget that we're human, but they never show their humanity. They never show that, yes, being a human means you get things wrong and then you make it right with the people that you've done wrong. You, If you learn things and you learn new things, you share it. You don't continue to lead people into being lost and leading them into destruction. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Do you tithe? What way do you tithe? With this new information, will you tithe differently? If you don't tithe or if you've done it differently, what are your methods? Let me know. Throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's got to be corrected now I may lose some friends. Preachers may not ever invite me no more, but I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. Tithing is an Old Testament concept. I'm going to prove that to you. Tithing is an Old Testament concept. The tithe was a requirement of the law in which the Israelites were to give 10% of the crops they grew and the livestock they raised they were supposed to give 10% of that to the temple or to the tabernacle. Tithing is an Old Testament concept. Nowhere, after the death of Jesus, there's nowhere, no, nowhere commands 
or, or any commandments or even recommends that Christians submit to a legalistic tithe system. The New Testament nowhere designates a percentage of income a person should set aside, but only says gifts should be in keeping with the income. It talks about giving of gifts. He said that your giving is a response to my ability to take care of you. He said, when you give, it is your declaration of dependence on me. And don't give reluctantly or don't give in response to pressure. Well, the, the tithing teaching always pressured me. It gave me fear. Malachi 3 and 10 says, what's that? You are cursed with a curse. Part of the law, it is a part of the law and it's demonstrated because there will be a blessing and there will be a curse. Do, do it in the King James. I want to do it in the language that we've heard all our lives. <laughs> okay, King James. All right. Will a man rob God? I mean, you've heard of Malachi. Son, if you've been in church at any time, will a man rob God? Watch this. I don't want to rob God. You want to rob God? I ain't robbing God. Yet, he says, you have robbed me. <gasps> you robbed God. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. Mm-mm-mm. Ought to be a shame of yourself. That's where the shame come from now. You done robbed God. You're a bunch of crooks. If you don't give your tithe, you're a crook robbing God. Well, Pastor, I want to set up a, a counseling session. Do you tithe? <laughs> well, I have a gift. I want to sing in the choir. Do you tithe? Do you, do you tithe? Because if you can't sing in this choir, if you ain't tithing. Because we're not going to have a bunch of robbers sitting up there robbing God with some robbing anointing coming through the airways. <laughs> it's fear and guilt. It keeps religion alive. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit later on. We equated the church with the storehouse. So they built granaries. The church is not, is not a storehouse for granary. Bring ye all the tithes of the little storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. You see, under grace, the window has opened. Jesus has come out the window. The blessing has been dispensed. Lord, forgive me. But in those days, you know, in the preaching circle, now you can't say nothing. That's too often what everybody else is saying. You got to stay right there in the boundary of everybody else saying that. Now you can't say that now. Check out some of the comments in the comment section and let me know if you will be doing anything differently in regards to this info. Mm -hmm. Open up a bottle